Oh yeah, we're back. It's time. It's back. Hey, David. We got a long intro. We're coming to your city. That's oh, it yeah. right there. You know what time it is. Football we got, time. We got college football, and we are in Birmingham, Alabama. For y'all that don't know, that's a big deal. That's a really Absolutely. big deal. Big deal? Yeah. Huge. It's huge. Alabama, Auburn, that's all that goes on. I mean, everybody's going to church on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> they go to church on Saturday to their favorite school. They go Saturday morning praying to God for a win. Absolutely. R. Kelly in the house. We got uh, Nick Saban, Gus Malzahn. Hey, uh, well, yeah, the Gus bus. Who's our, who's our buddy? Uh, Stidham? Jared Stidham? Jared Stidham. Hey, he's going to be throwing He's going to be throwing some... Haymakers. Well, is, not haymakers, but uh, bombs down the field this year, I and think. And it's not one, but Tua. Right? Ah, uh, Tua. Oh, you love that. Do we that. have to keep hearing you about Tua? I love that. I mean, That's what are you what thinking about this about. guy? I mean, you talk about expectations being built. This reminds me of Jeremy Johnson. You remember the Auburn quarterback? Oh, my gosh. Heisman Trophy. Uh, oh, guaranteed he's going to win. I can't stop hearing about him because, you know, there's some people – around us that just absolutely could not stand the hype around Jeremy Johnson. Yeah. And then when he showed I just up, sure for, hope he's uh, for your sake, well, not your sake. Uh you, you you don't have any players at Georgia no, Tech. Well, uh, yeah. Georgia Tech, we're just going to run the ball. We got Taquan Marshall and a bunch of running backs. We're going to run it, run it, run it. Yep, yep. And then what we'll, what we'll go about 8 and 3, right? 8 and 4? 7 and 4. That's yes. our standard. Um, you know, we play twelve games, we're probably 7 and 5. <laughs> we've been 7 and 4 for about the last Tim 10, Allen, 10 how are you? Years. Uh, Man, that's awesome. I'm excited, though. College hey, football. College football's back. And I tell you what, what's really funny here in Birmingham is, have you noticed, I guarantee you work tomorrow is going to be empty wherever you're working. Oh, yeah. Nothing going on there because everybody's gearing up Absolutely. For, for Saturday. Tonight, they got a couple games on. Really, I, really. I didn't look at the schedule. I don't know if anything exciting tonight, but uh, you know what? I did, I did want to bring up our, our new, uh, we got a beta umbrella drink. Listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. This is a, a passion fruit. A passionate man. It's passionate. You know, I tried it, and it's um, well, pa passion fruit. It's sucks. all right. But what is passion fruit? It's it's not a fruit. So so why did you waste like passion fruit? You would think one of the best fruits would get the name passion fruit. Yeah, passion saying seems like I love it. It seems like, I need it. Yeah, I want it. I sound like a, like a novel, but you know, but passion fruit. It seems like you you'd be getting more than that. But man, we are going to we're going to talk about the uh, AP preseason poll. We're going to talk about some football. We have to, but we're going to um, get into some real estate here. In we a got bit. some real estate. We've got uh, some some digitizing the mortgage. What people are looking for, what they want. We're also going to talk about mortgage <laughs> rates. We're going to talk well. about the cost of waiting. We're going to talk about uh, the difference in this market versus ten years ago when we ran into some problems. Man, that was crazy, wasn't it? Yeah, some people are getting a little nervous right now. Hey, they were drinking something harder than Umbrella Drink, man, I guarantee you. I'm telling you, but we're going to get to it, man. Listen, uh, the uh, AP poll came out. AP preseason SEC. Absolutely. Okay. Number Wal one. Wofford was number one, right? No, Wofford no. was number one. I, I think, uh, actually, I think it was Central Florida. Central Florida. Central Florida. Yeah, they're the Knights. national champs. They're the national champs. Number one, Alabama. Number three, UGA. Number nine, Auburn. UGA, number Georgia. 18. Mississippi State, 25 LSU. <laughs> Mississippi State. So that's your SEC in the top 25. I mean, LSU, I mean, talk about a team that no one knows what they're going to be. They got a great quarterback. Who knows what they're going to turn out to have this year? Is, is Ogeron still down there? Oh, it, Big Eddie. Big Eddie. Uh, who can't talk. Nah, I don't know where if you, guys, if y'all have not gone and watched some of the YouTube videos. We're going to get it done. Yeah, he, he can't talk. And all you understand is, go Tigers. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Yes, and it is hilarious. Clint Thompson will love that. That's right, and Jenny Williams is here. Jenny Williams tuning in. She got a real estate life, huh? That's right. That's right. So, <laughs> That's so right. we got some big game. Alabama-Louisville, going to be an interesting Hey, uh, what do you affair? think about the Louisville coach? I can't believe it. He calls the win. He's saying... He can't lose, essentially. Well, He's see, not going to lose. Here's the thing I don't, I don't understand. Every year, uh, we, we have trash talking. Against Saban. Hold on, hold on. Against Saban. I just don't understand. Why would you do that? Why would you set yourself up for uh, an even worse, uh, an even harder it's landing? It's crazy. It, well, no, hold on. Against, look, I'm an Auburn guy, and I'm sitting there going, against the most successful coach Arguably I mean, in the history of football. There's a difference between uh, being confident and... Guaranteeing victories. And and being cocky. Yeah. Okay? Uh, Especially yeah. when you're going... You're not even ranked 
Okay, we're playing at a neutral site. We Sa used to have a good quarterback, but we don't anymore. They're saying Saban might have uh, the best offense he's ever coached. The best. That's saying a lot for Saban. Now, I heard somebody say this week, Saban doesn't even want to play offense. He just, if, if he could play defense the whole game. Yeah, he really doesn't care all this hyperbole. If he could win just beating you on defense, right. he'd man, take that. He just needs to retire. But, man, yeah, I, think, I think it's amazing. I don't know why these college kids do it. I don't know why they put stuff on, on you know, up for the other team to, to focus on. Uh, hold on. In this up. case, it was not the kid. It was the coach yeah, that guarantees but, victory. But one of the kids on the, uh, the, D, the offensive line, Oh, was, was talking about their D line. Oh, Alabama oh. D line saying, "Yeah, we. I think we could dominate them." <laughs> I, I don't know if I'd ever. You know how many teams word. have tried that? That's unbelievable. I mean, that's right. But man, Auburn and Washington probably the biggest <laughs> game of the week. Hold on, hold on. We have a call. What? We have our first call. Game Robert Cox Tidwell will beat Coastal Carolina. They were going to beat Coastal that's Carolina. Solid. Uh, that's really going out on a limb. Yeah, I mean, that, he might as well put the headgear on. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, put yeah. the cock or whatever you want to call it. Put the game cock. Yeah, then. on your head. There you go. Hey, hey, now that is one opening of a game. I'm dying to see. I've never, I've been to South Carolina, but I think we came in late or something. But that, what is it, 20,000 leagues under the sea or whatever they come out to? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, obviously it's so big that I don't see it, but Tidwell could tell us. But, it, man, it's supposed to be cool. It's not as cool as the eagle flying around, yeah. but, you know. So what are you guys looking for this weekend? Biggest game, uh, I'm thinking it's uh, Auburn and Washington. Obviously, number nine versus number six. Yeah, Two big top game. ten teams coming out of the gate. Uh, a lot of talk about Auburn and Gus Malzahn getting uh, get, getting up to speed. Man, you know, Gus Malzahn's got some confidence now. He's got talent, and he's got good recruiters, and he just needs to be a head coach and not a play-by-play -play coach uh, yeah. that's playing every down and coaching every down. He well, just needs you know, to I, be I always worry about the, the uh, geography, right? you got Washington coming from – the uh, top corner all the way down to the bottom corner. Hey, hopefully in this humidity. Atlanta. Well, no, they're in Atlanta, aren't they? Playing so, in the big yeah. stadium. They've got the uh, yep. the new Mercedes-Benz. Auburn's been there a couple times. We, this is our third, to it. third game. What, three out of four games? So I think Washington right? might be a little bit... Yeah, actually, actually hold on. This will be the third game in a row for Auburn in Atlanta since they've been home. Yep, and I think Auburn's 0-2, so this will be... You have to bring that up. The third time's a charm. The third time this is guy. a charm. This guy, what, Debbie Downer. Man, I just, I just heard that today. Yeah, yeah. I heard it today. Hey, well, see, at least our school doesn't have a soccer field as a football field, right? Because your football field is more famous for their major league soccer, I don't, right? I don't, know what you're I, about. I don't know, Bobby Dodd Stadium, right? I don't know why you're picking on us. Yeah, because y'all are smart, though. I mean, so let's move on. Let's, let's uh, tell us what else we got. So, um, moving on. Moving on. So, listen, we're talking about the uh, the mortgage process. Uh, Fannie Mae National Housing Survey um, did some stats on what people think about the mortgage process and kind of yep. uh, streamlining it, digitizing it, uh, going with more of a, a, a digital process. Ah, man. Um, you know, and, and this is some of this is not news, okay? We know a lot of this. Borrowers want less paperwork. That's obvious. The really? Hardest, the, uh, the hardest part of, of buying a house is going to be proving your income and proving your assets. Um, pay stubs, W-2s, tax returns, if we have to get into that, uh, bank statements, all that stuff. People get tired of, of the questions. Uh, large deposits. Uh, are you on commission? Did you write things off? Uh, you know, there are a lot of questions. There is a lot of work that we have to do on our end to verify the ability to repay yeah, the folks, mortgage. What I've found is a lot of folks don't like the fact that you're verifying things. Some people do get a little upset with yeah, that. Yeah, it's amazing. They get upset with us, us, you know, digging into their stuff. But basically, they said ga gathering the necessary financial information to apply and get approved for a loan was cited as the most difficult part of the process by far, which that makes sense. Um, especially true for borrowers over the age of 45. Um, you know, but there, there was a, a lot of interesting information in here. They said, uh, a lot of borrowers still appreciate human interaction. Like they huh. still want people well, to do this. I think we talked about that, about bank branches, how they're there, you know, cause there's that group of people that says online banks. Like I'm a big online banker. I mean, right. But, but at the same time, there's certain times I need it, but there are certain people that need to have that one-on-one and just like people that love a real book over a Kindle or what have you. Yeah. 
Um, Absolutely. Well, I think that, um, you know, some people said they would love the whole process to be digital. Yo, what's now, we, up, Tara? How are you? The pride are, of Northwest Arkansas yes. is here. Yes. How much does Nick Staven pay for his ownership of Gus Malzahn? Oh, man. This is getting Something. cold, man. Uh, uh, well, Auburn bounced back. I mean, really, I mean, really man, he, 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 he's like, uh, uh. got Tracy Griffin. Thank you for tuning in. But, uh, but look, we just want to say the more than two thirds would like to be approved online, pre approved online. That makes sense. Uh, we had 65% that still wanted a person there to explain the mortgage terms and options. I think this is one business where there's so many questions <laughs> and there is a lot of information. You can Google everything that you want to, you can do a lot of research online, but there's still some stuff that we need to help you figure out, right? Wow, absolutely. I mean, and and I, I think, too, what you're going to find is a lot of these high-tech companies like uh, Quicken Loans, all these guys are going to start online, and guess what's going to happen? You're going to end up having to do some of the traditional stuff. Man. And you're not going to have them around to answer the question. Yeah, and I'm just going to tell you right now, the, uh, the Quicken Loans of the world are going to shine as a marketing company. Mark my words, as a marketing company, not a mortgage company. Yeah, you, you walked into my office this week, and what have you? You saw a commercial about quick. Yeah. What was it? What Listen, was it was uh, it, they were talking about their their uh, rate protection. Okay, so they have a uh, program where you can go look for a house, and your your rate is is let's see, quote unquote locked, right? So they <laughs> lock your rate before you actually go shop for the house. Well, if you you know, if you do some research on that, which I did, I put in the information. I said, I'm looking to buy it about two to three months. Yeah. And the rates that came back to me were, uh, the rates had about two to three points. A float? No, two to three points of uh, fees. <laughs> so wow. like uh, your your origination points would be 2%, two to three percent. I think the five-year arm was up to three percent. Um, so you're paying a lot of fees. And listen, this is a, a stable rate environment right now. I right. think for the next... I think really for the next 18 months, rates are going to trickle up maybe north of 5%. But, well, I sure hope not. But see, in, in, in stable environments, it's safe to make that. Well, I did say where Trump today you know, made some comments apparently about trying to... He, he's going to learn at some point he, he can't control everything, and the Fed guys do not care what he thinks. Yeah. Once they nominate him, you're, they're there. They're on that Fed board, and they didn't... I don't, not that they didn't take kindly, but they just didn't care what he said. Uh, well, see, I think, he wants to retard the uh, the the that the, the uh, Fed funds rate. Yeah, he wants that to stay where it is. Yeah, and that's and that's a good idea. I think, and, and I, see, I, that's obvious because the the economy's turning, right? We we ratcheted the Fed funds rate up, and rates started moving. Ha! 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 Coordinating shirts, man, you copied me. Oh yes, Does, doesn't it look good? Ter hey, we don't look as good as Tara, but you know, uh, can't but help it. I can't help it, right? Can't help it. Tara was a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader at one time. Well, I think. But uh, Tara is a great realtor up in northwest Arkansas. So if you're ever in northwest Arkansas, call Tara. Number one, actually, she's the number one agent in all of Arkansas. But, hey, what are we saying? But anyway, and by the way, you forgot to say hi to, uh, hey, Brent Glad, my old business partner, right there from Auburn. Yes. Man, if you're down in Auburn, man, that dude is the bomb. He's awesome. Great guy. And also, uh, Amanda, hello. I know you're watching. Um, but anyway, so uh, let's move on. So the, um, you know, as far as rates right now, we're still around four and a half on a 30-year fix, 3%, I mean, 4% on a 15-year fix. Haven't really moved a whole lot. So, you know, for, for companies like this to go out on a limb and say, oh, we'll, we'll guarantee you things if you pay a lot of fees, you know, they're really not uh, hey, taking I can that, do that much chance. Hey, right. I'll yeah. do that. Oh, yeah. That's easy to do. You can call me, and I'll, I'll be happy to match whatever they're doing because it's simple. It's yeah, I'll really, in other words, it's a simple I'll, game they're playing. I'm going to have one hand in one pocket of yours, and then I'm going to, you know, it's permanent money. Yeah, just ask questions and, and get the information. Absolutely. Uh, but listen, this this is a, a Freddie Mac mortgage survey is saying sales and price, price growth have softened these last few months. <laughs> Okay, so this leveling of rates, so so rates are leveling. What do you mean off. by softening and leveling off? The sales and price growth. So so price growth of real estate. Okay, so we're not seeing the uh, the same type of appreciation that we had early in the year. So what happened early in the year? Rates moved up, uh, prices were moving up. So that was kind of pricing some buyers out of the market, right? So they were paying more for the house and higher rates. So in turn, their overall 
uh, payment, their overall cost was higher, a lot higher. Gotcha. So now with, with prices, you know, starting to, to level off. It is leveling off, no question. And with, with rates leveling off, you know, that'll bring some more buyers back into the market, which will help everything. Well, we need it to happen. And we, we talk about it every week. We need more new construction to start so that these resales, it has an inverse thing. And yeah. Uh, and a lot of that's going to be uh, commercial money that needs to open up. Yeah, and I think a lot of people have been uh, worried about the market over the last, uh, let's say the last, I'd say maybe three weeks, three to four weeks. Uh, things have slowed down a little bit. But look, you, you know, some people starting to talk about uh, some changes in the economy and maybe a downturn. But the difference between now and maybe 10 years ago mm -hmm. was that at that point 10 years ago, in 2008, we were getting crazy with lending. Okay? Oh, crazy is an understatement. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody got a loan. We were extending all Drive kinds of loans. And, and the inventory, see, all businesses go back to supply and demand, right? Absolutely. The inventory back in 08 was 11 months. Oh, yeah. That's okay, right. So, so a healthy Complete market, buyer's market. Healthy market was about six. Six. Right? Absolutely. Now we're at four months. Okay? So what I'm saying is, is when we play the supply and demand game, when these uh, the rates cool off yes. and, and prices cool off, Right. That's going to bring more buyers in. The supply is still low, which helps the equation. Then the demand goes up. So we're still the housing market is still going to be healthy. Absolutely, and we are seeing a healthy market. But the, but the problem is, if you're looking to sell, you better be ready to have options. You know, know what you're going to do and have an option you don't like. I mean, sorry, but you know, you may have to go get an apartment for three months, even though you're 46, you've made it, you're driving a Maserati. Guess what? You're living on love again. You, you put your stuff in storage. I mean, you know, there's Courtney Harvey. She wouldn't mind living in an apartment again. She uh, would love that. But, I mean, you, you've got you to know your options, right? Sellers are going to have more competition in these later months of the year. Uh, so if you're looking to sell your house, you're going to have to be well, more aggressive. You know, I heard a, say, a statement the other day about this time of year. This is when the big dogs come out to play, right? Uh, a lot of the uh, big money doesn't want to deal with the summertime crush, and they're not going to be pigeonholed because they don't have to sell. By the way, I hate that term. I don't have to sell. Now, I'm talking to you about selling my house, but I don't have to sell. Then why are we talking? Yeah. Right? But anyway, but so this time of year, if you got a house that's over for us, uh, what, over 500000 I know for some of these guys, it's like, well, that's entry level, uh, especially in Bentonville, Arkansas, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. Right? Um, but when we're talking over five, this is a good time to put your house back on the market because... It, there, there is no uh, force other than school for some of those people. But even them, they're a lot of those people in private school or they're already in the school system. So don't hesitate to put your house in the market right now because those guys can afford to absorb moving expenses, all those things that normally we're banging to get into by the end of the summer. Or yeah, and you know, and if you look across the. Uh you look across the market at buyers, right? We got first time home buyers, everybody from first time home buyers all the way to uh, people downsizing, right? Selling their house, uh, empty nesters, right? And now you've got a lot of people in a lot of volume that's driven by the school schedule, but there's still a lot of reasons why people are still going to buy and sell regardless of what time of year it is. So you got first time home buyers, you got uh, move up buyers, you got uh, downsizing. So you got a lot of things going on that's still going to help the demand, still going to help. The market and our supply is still low. So, you know, the housing market overall is going to be strong for the foreseeable future. Another beautiful thing about the next 18 months, let's say that rates go up another half a point. Let's say we, uh, we, we push we'll up to five. five and a half. Yep. I did some numbers just looking at the cost of waiting. Okay, so on a $250,000 loan, um, another half of a point is going to cost about $75 a month. A month. So, in, so if my mortgage payment's $1,000... It's now $1,075. Yeah, on a $250,000 loan. So that's the cost of waiting. But the beautiful thing about, let's say, on the other side of that, rates move up to five, five and a half. Then there's room, you know, like right. Trump is trying to do, is trying to control the Fed. Then there's room to actually bring rates down a little bit. Okay, yeah. so when you, if you get to that point and you can bring rates down a little bit, brings buyers in, increases demand, still... Good, positive stuff for the housing market. You know, I had a guy uh, that watches uh, the happy hour that asked me the other day a very good question, and it was about the, Fed, about the Fed lowering interest rates. I think there's a lot of misconception about that that's the interest rates that you guys are offering, 
right? Because right. they go, oh my gosh, they lowered the interest rate. But just to kind of let everybody know that doesn't know that the Fed funds rate is the is the bank rate at which banks borrow from each other, correct? Yeah, it's overnight lending rate. Overnight lending. Because you're if, essentially every time you write a check, somebody's borrowing from one bank until the time to fund it happens. And yeah, all that. so it's an extremely short term rate, right? Yeah. Um, it, but it increases the flow of money when that comes way down. Now, when that moves or when they change it, it kind of trickles through. So it's kind of like... Uh, but it doesn't necessarily affect you guys immediately. No, but it's kind of like a family. Okay, so the Fed funds rate is kind of like a, uh, a distant third cousin twice removed. Uh, we're get, This is getting good. Right? It's getting yeah. good. A distant third cousin twice removed from a 30-year fixed rate. Now, if he does something stupid, does it affect your family? Yeah. So it trickles through. So eventually, as you've seen over the last couple of years, when the Fed funds keeps ratcheting up, then it translated into other bond yields. And then eventually the 30-year fixed has now started to move up. And you can kind of control, you know, the, uh, right. the progression of it. Well, and one thing is, too, I, I was reading about how, you know, once these banks essentially... Because remember, we're really controlled by what ten banks in the country that are really. I mean, you guys are funding your own money, but it's you know you're selling a lot of that right. to these big banks. But the problem is they have to make money. They have to make loans, or they're not making money. So, in essence, uh, just because interest rates rise, they had to bring them back down. Because guess what? Not as many people. They get. They got to keep that equilibrium there. Yeah, they um, keep people being yeah, able to and get them. Yeah, and the shock to the system uh, that that you saw in the first half of the year when rates jumped up, you know, that's when things really slow down and that's when they really got to uh, get smart and bring them back down. It, it, it's, it needs to be a slow, smooth transition into higher rates. Thank you, Mr. Arnett. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Um, Thank you, buddy. Uh, but you know, that is right. And that's one thing we, we all, we're an immediate economy where everybody wants something now, 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 now. This is something that we want to be slow. Yeah. You well, want a slow and steady movement. Um, but you know, again, it's 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 been overdue. It's By the long way, overdue. One thing I wanted to bring up to you: Did you see this thing on Aretha Franklin? Man, the world, the woman's worth like, what? What did it say? Eighty-five million dollars, I believe. Yeah, you were telling me about that. I mean, eighty-five million dollars. I hear every day. This is you know, I didn't know I was an attorney in a former life, but um, Aretha Franklin dies without a will. I mean, think about how many lawyers were involved in her life, managers. Everything else, and did anyone Record ever deals, bother to go? The contracts, contracts all over the place. Yeah. Did anybody all bother to go? Hey, I think you need to have a will. You got all this stuff. A basic up. will. I yeah. mean, you can write a will on the back of a paper bag, right? Uh, as long as, long as, as you got a notary. Yeah, or you know, you self, you make it self. Uh, what they call it? Self attesting. If Robert Tidwell is here to tell us, um, self proving, I believe. But anyway, what's interesting here though is, and why it's so important to our finances for all of us. Is that if you don't do that, guess who's deciding where your stuff's going to go? Yeah, the courts. The courts. A yeah. state employee. And it's not. It's, it's not going to be fun for the family. It's not going to be. Uh, it's not going to be timely. I mean, it's not going to be fair. That opens up a lot of fighting, a lot of hurt feelings. That's the last thing you want. Right? Absolutely. I mean, that's the very last thing you want. You're creating turmoil. Well, here's the thing: you work so hard to build what you have, and so you finally decide, eh, I don't care. You all find it out, right? Yeah. And it, the problem is your third cousin, twice removed, is well, going to come know, in and want something. Well, you know, a big thing was, uh, big things happening now is these podcasts, right? Yeah, yeah. And so we listened to one that was uh, a town here in Alabama. Oh, wow. is it <laughs> negative? Uh, yeah. We're about to have It one. was interesting. But it was about Will's a guy, you know, died and didn't leave. And it just, it, it just creates a mess. Ah, know? just get a Will. By the way, one thing that's very interesting is that uh, uh, because there's some other some uh, oh, what is it? One of the big companies has gotten into basically offering a very cheap will thing. Go to like willmaker.com and there's a couple of Nolo puts it out. Uh, I think they're like half price now, so now's a good time if you're looking to do your own will. Go on there. Obviously, this is not sponsored, but uh, or you can go with a paper bag, take it down to the bank, get a yeah, note, get a pick the wig of the bag. Oh, that'll yeah. be twenty five cents nowadays. Yeah. That's, you know that. Yeah, I, Aldi. Don't don't do it on the back of an Aldi bag because they don't have them. They don't have them. Oh man, I saw Ben Styles he posted a picture on Facebook. He went to Aldi. <laughs> Didn't realize you don't get bags at Aldi so unless you bring your own. Oh, he had groceries spread out all over the. 
back of the car. It was, I tell you, it was awesome. what are we going to do, right? Uh, but he saved some money. Saving money is awesome. All That's right, it. What we got? That's it. That's it, guys. Listen, enjoy uh, football. the football weekend. Man, I, I, I can't say enough. It's going to be exciting. I know everybody's waiting oh. for it. Everybody's looking forward to it. You said tomorrow, I don't think I don't think we realize it's going to be terrible. Yet. Oh, productivity is out the window. You know, here in Alabama, it's just you know awful. How I about mean, that? the 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 saving sound bites, the build up to the hey, well, to Louisville game. But you know, one person that I know is gonna is gonna really really be still involved in her work tomorrow. Uh, one of our viewers right there, Courtney Harvey. Oh yeah, she could care less until it's time for kickoff. But I'm telling you that the one thing that she will not miss her Peloton is that Auburn football. Oh no, 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 no! She's a smart lady. That's right. That's important in many ways. That's important. All right. Well, guys, we appreciate you tuning in this week, and uh, we will be back next Thursday, four o'clock. Hey, four p.m. Tidwell, we'll have to bring you on one week. It'll be fun to have you, and we'll see Thank you next.